Last episode, we just left off finishing Tree Gnome Village. We're going to keep doing questing this episode as well, just following the Optimal Iron Man quest guide on the wiki still. So we knocked out two easy ones here, Monk's Friend and Hazeel Cult. All of that is leading up to a huge one for us, Plague City. That quest actually is. That's huge because now we can move on to Biohazard, which after Biohazard, we can get the first, I'd say the first big item of our account, which is the... Ardoin uh, Easy Achievement Cape, which is going to be huge. So let's just go knock out Biohazard right away. Oh, and this gave me, I think, what, like 15 mining? Yeah, so that's awesome. Wow. I came here to get my rusty sword for the quest. I think I have pickpocketed this thing literally four times. Actually, no, three times. And I got polished buttons, ham robe, and a rusty sword. That couldn't be any better. Let's go back and finish the quest. Or, sorry, this isn't for the quest. This is for the um, e uh, easy diaries. But either way, still definitely very useful. And that is Biohazard done, so we can officially finish the easy diaries here um, and get our level 1 cape, which will be huge, so we might as well go do that now. Hey, and there it is. We got our easy Ardoin cloak, which is huge, so that allows me to teleport right to the monastery there. Uh, which will also be helpful early game when I get to the fairy rings before I have a better option uh, for closer fairy ring. Um, but yeah, now that that's done, uh, we'll see. I might take a little break, do some uh, rune crafting, get some runes. Uh, it's, I gotta still do the mini quest, but it it's very short. So we'll, we'll see what we do next. But either way, huge step in the account. I also completely forgot the main reason for getting this cape so early on is so that we can start getting our death rune farm going. So I think I, I just talked to them, right? No? Do I use the cat on it? Oh, here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just talked to him selling the cat. And here is our first 200 death runes. I believe. What? There we go. There it is. First 200 death runes. All right, let's go get the uh, next cat brewing. I guess we just completed the, um, what is it even called? Enter the Abyss uh, mini quest. Uh, we You don't even actually have to enter it, ironically enough. Um, but we're at nine, and uh, I, f I believe you need, what, like, ten for Guardians of the Rift or whatever. So we're going to go get one more rune crafting level. And I'm going to do s some um, Guardians of the Rift for a little bit, just because I know we have some quests coming up where we're going to want to be using a lot of magic. And I actually don't hate rune crafting, surprisingly enough. Especially on an Iron Man. It's, it feels rewarding, early game Guardians of the Rift. Um, so I'm going to go buy a better pickaxe, get a uh, one rune crafting level, and then uh, we might do a little bit of Guardians of the Rift before we get back to some questing. There's Temple of the Eye complete. Yes. Yes. Alright, there's our first pull. <laughs> it's... <laughs> You know, funny to be excited about mind runes, but I didn't get nearly as many as I wanted uh, during the actual my first trip here to the mini game. So I'm happy to get that 335, and then get in the large pouch, even though we can't use it. Also feels good. So the first quest we wanted to get out of the way with our new runes was Witch's House to get ourselves a nice boost to our HP levels. Um, yeah, 6,000 experience. So what does that get us? It gets us up to 25 hit points. So that'll be a big buffer for a lot of the quests that we have. Coming up, we're going to have to run past things and fight things that aren't safe spottable. Although I think the next couple of quests still have uh, safe spot bosses. But yeah, let's move on to the next quest. It looks like our second cat is about to grow up while doing the fight arena quest, so this is perfect. After this, we can go turn in the second cat to get our second 400 death runes. Also, I need to definitely buy a fire staff, because I'm just wasting too many mind runes hitting so low on these guys at this point. Um, and I don't really want to use the chaos just yet. I'll probably use them on the last, last one. What is it, this guy? 
Um, but yeah, I'm just wasting so many of these runes. I have plenty of air runes, so I should just go get the fire staff, and then we can uh, at least hit a little bit better with the fire strike. There's that quest done. 12,000 attack experience. So this is going to get me up to 36 attack and 30 thieving. So we're only 8 levels away from Master Farmers, which is awesome. So we can start getting some seeds and doing some early farm runs. Uh, so right now, though, we have a couple easy quests to get out of the way in this area. So we're going to go turn in our cat, and then we are going to go start the clock tower test quest. And that is clock tower complete. Nice and easy. What does that put us at? We are at 22 quests down. They're starting to come quick now. Oh, thank goodness. That is always just the most fun quest. Once you get them all in here, though, it feels good. There is sheep shear done. Beautiful. Four quest points, too. Very nice. Unfortunately, our audio did not record for the next couple of clips, so we're just going to do a voiceover here. Yeah, we just kind of stuck with the questing grind, so here you can see we just completed Dwarf Cannon. This doesn't really get it. I mean, I guess, yeah, we're getting closer to the Dwarf Multi Cannon. Honestly, I don't even enjoy using it all that much. But after this one, we actually did have a very notable quest coming up. And that is the waterfall quest. So turning this one in gets you 40 attack. Well, it gets me, got me to 40 attack. And as long as you follow this guide, it would get you to 40 attack as well, which is huge. We don't have any weapons that we can use yet that require 40 attack, but obviously all the rune gets unlocked for us. Also, at this point, I had already been doing. Oh, never mind. I had not. So let me save that for later but either way here you can see we just hit 32 combat as well so that is huge oh another big unlock i forgot to mention here is that we now have enough quest points to start dragon slayer one so we can get our anti-dragon shield so that's huge because um, as you can see we're still rocking this wooden shield here next on the list was merlin's crystal this or sorry never mind skipped one murder mystery uh, another just basic quest, get it out of the way. I think it unlocks um, probably Merlin's Crystal, <laughs> I'm assuming. I don't actually know, but I think it unlocks some quest lines for you. Regardless, the next one after this was Merlin's Crystal. And here you can see, uh, actually may maybe not. I think this is me just recording the final kill. But if you're doing this and you accidentally click out of the text box after killing him, you have to go through the whole kill again. So this is actually my second time killing this guy. Um, I would say this is the first notable guy to kill if you're trying to like rush quests as a Iron Man. I might have already said that once before. You know, don't look back too far back into it on you know the last episode. But yeah, he just can hit a lot if you don't have any defense, and we haven't trained any defense yet. So uh, yeah, as you can see, I went through. I mean, not that much food, but if you're not prepared, don't bring a full inventory. It, it can get dicey quick. Luckily, you can just leave and come back if that happens. But here, yeah, we killed him. So this dialogue right here, if you would, uh, like, exit out of this, you have to kill him all over again. So that's what I did the first time. Don't do that. After this clip, we have a clip coming up where I... So this one, I'm just trying to decipher what I was supposed to talk about. And I had a lot of clips where I was talking about things that... Now we'll be lost forever, you know, but oh well. If anything, it shortens down the video, so, you know, maybe I need to have my audio lost more times than not. But this clip, the reason I wanted to keep it in here is because I don't think I've mentioned yet, but while following the quest guide, we've been doing the bar crawl, and I think I pulled it up here just to mention that we're pretty close to finishing it, and that's going to be my goal here to finish it soon. Also, I didn't realize, but you don't even have to finish the Merlin's Crystal quest to get Excalibur, because I actually have it in my inventory right now. I didn't even realize that until I was at the bank here. I was like, what? We have Excalibur. Sweet. Uh, obviously, still going to complete the quest, though. So, next, after this clip, I think we are actually going to Varrock to get our anti-dragon fire shield. Nope, I am out of order. I lied to you guys. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, sorry, not Varrock. Lumbridge, so that's what we're doing here. So, there it is. Beautiful. Already, day two. Uh, not day two, but episode two, and we already got the Excalibur and the anti-dragon shield. It feels amazing.
Here I'm just turning in Merlin's Crystal six quest points, which is shocking, because um, it's a very easy quest. It kind of just hands you the quest points there, but that's perfect because it's going to help get me to um, Cook's, not Cook's assistant, the, uh, uh, what is it called? The one that takes forever. Recipe for Disaster is the name I was looking for here. So getting the six quest points there is really helpful for that. Here is uh, me doing the boss fight for Holy Grail. Just kind of wanted to show a few seconds of flinching it. It is the easiest boss in the game to flinch. It's actually very forgiving. You have, like, even if you sit there for, like, a half a second, it feels, he still doesn't attack you as long as you get off of it quick enough. That was that done. Before we turn in the quest, though, we actually now got to the point where we can fish. I already forgot what these fish are called. But the stackable fish, which we talked about last episode, so that now raising our kittens will be much easier because we can just have one slot taken up and not even worry about it, have like 10 fish there at all times, never have to run out. And then here it is me turning in the bar crawl. I, I forget what you need it for, but it's for multiple quests. So it's just nice to have that one out of the way. And last but not least, we turned in Holy Grail, which is huge for the defense and prayer experience. I think this got me up to like 37 defense or something like that. So without training any defense, we already have a decent enough level where we can, you know, do some tank testing now. But at this point, we are all caught up and the rest of the clips hopefully will have audio in them. So this is the end of the voiceover. Enjoy the next clip. There is Dreadic Ritual done, which unlocks Herbler for us. We probably won't touch it for a while. Um, until we start doing farm runs, that's when we'll probably start leveling it, other than obviously stuff we just get from killing things. But for now, it's still nice to have unlocked and level 3 in. There is Below Ice Mountain done. On to Black Fortress next. We have a... Uh, Decent amount of pretty easy ones coming up next, so we should be able to knock out the next few quests in no time. Wow, that was a lot easier than I remember before. Black Knight's Fortress done. It probably does help that I've been doing a lot of sand crabs while editing some videos, so we have much better stats than the last time around. But while we're here, we might as well go ahead and start Recruitment Drive right away and get, get that quest done as well. Wow. That was even easier than the last one. They're really flying off the shelves now, and we get our first piece of Initiate Armor, which I believe is the same stats as Mithril, if I remember correctly. Oh, and 10 Herbalore and 30 Rare. Those are both fantastic. I didn't realize how, uh, how awesome. Literally, that quest took me six minutes. <laughs> that was the you know, most efficient six minutes of uh, skilling and questing. Uh, we'll probably have the whole account. There's Observatory Quest done, on to Priest in Peril, which is going to unlock Mauritania for us. Priest in Peril down, on to Rag and Bone Man Part 1. Another one bites the dust, on to Nature Spirit. And 15 cooking. Nature Spirit down, time to turn in our bar, bar crawl, and then Scorpion Catcher is next on the list. Let's see if we get any levels here. 28 crafting, 39 hit points. Alright. Another one bites the dust. On to Jungle Potion. And level 51. 41 strength too, so now all of our base, you know, attack above 40. Nice. Jungle Potion done, on to Vampire Slayer next. Vampire Slayer down, on to the next one. Another one down, and some early Slayer levels. 13 Slayer, very nice. Oh, whoops, I just got, I didn't want to get a Slayer task here. Rip, well, cave bugs aren't too bad at least. So our next quest is Death Plateau, which we need an iron bar for, and we can't make one yet. Uh, there's a few ways you can get it, but the quickest way will be taking our first trip into the wilderness. I believe like right around here is an iron bar, so let's uh, run out there and go get it. 
I'm not too concerned, to be honest, at this level, and if worse comes to worse, I can just run back. I should be able to survive anybody this low level that would even attempt to kill me. Yeah, uh, that was pretty easy. So, iron bar acquired onto Death Plateau. While in the area, I figured I might as well buy my first piece of the graceful outfit. I'm pretty sure the hood is exactly 35. Yep, there we go. First piece acquired. There is Death Plateau done. The quest itself is nothing too uh, significant, but it does unlock uh, climbing boots for us. So we're going to go buy our first pair of climbing boots from Tenzing, and those should be best in slot for us for a... Quite a while, I would guess. Goblin Diplomacy, done. We just finished up getting 20% Hasidious House Favor for the Depths of Despair quest. Uh, really, you just buy 200 compost uh, once you get to 5. Come here, do the saltpeter till you get to 20. It doesn't really take very long at all. Now on to Depths of Despair. Depths of Despair done, on to Mountain Daughter. Mountain Daughter done. And 32 prayer. Well, this is a pretty big moment. One, we finally can teleport to Varrock. And two, we are about to get this boss fight over with for the Grand Tree. So once we finish that quest, this quest, which will be soon now, We'll be able to use the gnome gliders, which will be huge. Good amount of experience gained here, and we ever so slightly can move a little bit more freely. And that will be it for episode two. We kind of grabbed everything notable that we got from this episode and are either wearing it, you know, right now or have it in our inventory. And wow, did we cover a lot of ground in this episode. I know it was just all quests again. Uh, and honestly, the next episode's probably going to be a lot of quests as well. But soon we will be getting to some other content. We're going to do some Temporas soon enough. We're going to need to get our prayer ups. We're going to need to get some probably dragon bones at some point so that we can get up to that point so when we get to monkey madness we are ready for it the farm runs and herb runs have to start coming soon as well yes we have a laundry list of stuff to do that is not quest related per se that will be coming up all with the goal of of course getting to uh, dragon weaponry and ibans blast so that we can have uh, decent equipment for our Barrows runs when those get going. But at this point I am definitely getting way, way ahead of myself. But yeah, that's kind of the direction we are going right now. So sorry again, there might be another episode of All Questing next time. But there are a lot of notable ones coming up once again. Actually, I mean, the more and more questing I do, there's just going to be more and more notable ones coming up. So let's see where we ended at the end of this episode. We are at 46 quests completed, 87 quest points, and here's our stats. We have been doing a lot of AFK Sand Crabs while editing here, so I think that's going to help me a lot. I didn't do that at all during my last Iron Man, so my health was always the biggest issue, and we're already at 42 health. As soon as I go to Temporas, we'll get full rune, so we'll be a lot more tanky. So uh, hopefully... Hopefully this Iron Man can go the distance. But thanks again for watching to the end. Uh, and always, if you have any suggestions, definitely feel free to uh, let me know. And uh, I hope to see you guys next time. Thanks.